All right, welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time for us to take a look at uh, some headlines on some of our national dailies. And after that, we'll have Off the Press with a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK talking about Chris Wando Kende, who is a uh, will be joining us to take a look at all of these headlines that we'll be taking a look at this morning. But let's start with the newspapers before we introduce you to Chris. We're starting with the Guardian newspaper. Well, the Guardian leads with this content as aspirants, minority caucus reject Akbabu Abbas. Details of that you find on page six of the Guardian newspaper. On top of it, you find reconciliation not mentioned during Obi's visit. Shoinka clarifies. You find details of that on page three of the Guardian newspaper. And tight security as Supreme Court rules on Adelike Oyetola's case today. Details of that is on page seven. And going down, you find technicalities. Time wasting won't be entertained. PEPC warns Atiku Obi Tinubu's lawyers. Technicality, time wasting will not be entertained. And that's on page six that you'll find details of that. That's all I'll be taking from the Guardian newspaper. Okay, we'll move to the Daily Trust newspaper. The Daily Trust this morning is leading with a story, Tribunal to Lawyers, Parties. We must consider Nigeria's peace. And under that you have, here's Atiku's petition today, Obi's tomorrow, ASK's dismissed, Lalong barred from representing Tinubu. We also have Rebs reject NCC's 700 billion naira request to close coverage gap. You'll see that story on page 5. On page 19, there's a story, uh, not page 19, page 11, there's a story, Oshun Governorship Supreme Court decides a delicate Oyetola's fate today. Uh, they have that story also on page 11. APC National Working Committee ratifies Tinubu's candidates Akpabu for Senate, Abbas for Speaker. You'll also find that story on page 10 of uh, Daily Trust. Now, ahead of commissioning, Dangote says Nigeria to gain $20 billion from refinery. And then there is a report. Uh, that report is on... Uh, Okay, there's a report on gunmen invading Kagako, Kagarko Emir's house. Abduct seven grandchildren, six others. Uh, those were the headlines from the Daily Trust that we are taking this morning. All right, let's go to the Punch newspaper. And the Punch is leading with Tribunal. Tinubu Atiku Obi's legal battle commences. The riders, PDP. APM's petition pre-hearing hold today, LP Obi's case Wednesday. And then you have Tribunal Warns lawyer says those who deserve justice will get it. All right, you have details of that on page, pages two and three of the Punch newspaper. Right on top you have National Assembly, APC Peaks Akbabu Abbas. Details, page two. Obi's visit, not about reconciliation. So you can say in there, page 19 is where you have details of that. Bandits kidnap 40 Kaduna worshippers, nine Emir's children. Details of that will be found on page 19 of the Punch newspaper. An FG Plus rescue of Nigerian domestic workers in Iraq. Page 15 of the Punch newspaper is where you get details of that. FG's plan to rescue uh, Nigerian domestic workers in Iraq. That's all we'll be taken from the Punch newspaper. Okay, Daily Independence is next. Daily Independent also leads with the story of uh, coming from the National Assembly or about the National Assembly. APC endorses Akpabu for Senate President, Abbas for Speaker. And the writers are uh, 
Jibrin Kalu for Deputy Senate President, Deputy Speaker, respectively. Senators elect Kik insist on producing own leaders. Uh, presidential election court dismisses AA's petition against Tinubu is another headline. And uh, the writer is against or warns against undue delay with frivolous motions. Uh, the Nigerian judiciary is known to do that a lot. We also have stories on top of that. May 29 handover date sacrosanct, says Defense Minister. Defense Minister is saying that uh, this story starts on page one and continues on page seven. Presidential election petition court. Atiku PDP seek live broadcast of hearing. You will find that story also there on page 29. Then we go down the, or the, at the corner of uh, the left hand corner of that paper, that front page, you'll find Buhari asks NUPRC to supervise all crude oil export terminals. Page 7 is where you find the story. Energy infrastructure, Transcop Power gets discharge certificate from FG. Okay, Obaseki, that's page 7 as well. On page 6, Obaseki okays 13th month salary for Edo workers. That is on page 6. Bravo. Uh, on page 7 again, another batch of 129 Nigerians fleeing Sudan arrive at Abuja. And uh, on page 6, 134 kidnapped victims rescued in Kogi State. And just a small headline under there, we have Nigerian Navy to reduce high insurance premium on ships, as according to CNS. Okay, those are the headlines from uh, Daily Independent. And that about closes our headline readings uh, yes. this morning. Okay, so it's time for us to go to Up the Press, where we have Chris Kane Dewandu, a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, who is joining us this morning from Abuja. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning. It's nice to be here this morning. Good morning it's to our viewers. It's always a pleasure to have you join us, Chris. Let's go straight to the tribunal. That is yeah. the hottest matter right <laughs> now. Um, well, the, the PEPC has warned that technicalities, time wasting, won't be entertained. And they've issued that warning to the Atiku, Obi, and Tinubu's lawyers. Let, let's start with that. Technicalities will not be entertained. Yes, um um, one of the reasons why I'm in Abuja is because of the tribunal sitting um, by the court. And so it commenced um, yesterday, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it took this case. And uh, for the justices of the Supreme Court, five of them that are the case, are saying is that um, technicalities will not be uh, entertained. What they did was what we call laying out the rules. Um, so if you are, it's like being employed. When you, employ, you get employed in an organization, you'll be given the rules and regulations of that organization. So what it caused it yesterday was just laying out the rules. And um, it is going to be taken patches. Today is going to be the turn of Article. Yesterday was the two. And I think there are about two or three of them. And um, so after that, the main fireworks starts. And um, so it was good enough that um, the head of the panel stated that technicalities uh, will not be entertained. And that has been the bane of our judicial system and most of our um, the judgments of the tribunals in the past. And um, it has not gone down with Nigerians. Uh, a, a good uh, example is what happened in Imo State, where somebody that came forth was elevated to be the governor of Imo State to put the matter. That's how he became the governor. And things that again after that, it's the level of insecurity the rest of them. So it's good to know that this has been laid out and I hope that all the litigants and all the uh, lawyers and everybody involved with it are to the rules as laid down by the tribunal or the court. Um, some said it's the court. They don't want to be known as tribunals, as the court. Uh, um, back. So there's a hard reason. Well, well, is there some kind of handbook that will give us uh, a definition of what can be called frivolous or something? Because this is 
this, these are things that have been done over the years in our judiciary and people are becoming used to it as if there's no place that you can go to and, and find out that these things are wrong. Okay, so now, for instance, yesterday, a former governor came to represent someone who was standing trial and they said this couldn't happen. Will that constitute frivolity? Will that constitute one of the things that they are saying should never happen? So who defines these frivolities? Or who defines what is uh, a, a deliberate attempt to scuttle the process or to delay the process? Where do we find uh, the penalties for this? You know, the law, um, one of the definitions of law is the law is what it is. It is a definition, one of the several definitions of law. So if the law is what it is, then that is what it is. And as defined by the justice, they are setting the rules. And the rules will be made available to all the, um, the lawyers involved, either for the, uh, those uh, abroad the case or those that are defending themselves. So that is, but the fact is that um, it, it, it has been laid out and they are aware. The issue of trying to use certain uh, uh, pretense or trying to use some technicalities to be able to prolong. Don't forget that this tribunal has a time frame. It is not what it used to be in the past again. It has a time frame to fix it. So you know, in the past, this can drag for the next four years. Mm -hmm. No, it is no longer like that. The new electoral act um, it has defined a time frame for this. And uh, I think within the 90s, this should be done and dusted, uh, as far as this one is concerned. So it is not going to be so. In the past, we've been seeing all sorts of technologies being brought, all sorts of technologies uh, being brought, and other. What they are telling you now, bring, don't forget, uh, the, 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 all the, the parties involved have already submitted um, the all their papers. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have submitted. You know that they did that about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They've submitted all the past. So it is just to speak to those issues as it were and provide evidence. The rock of, uh, the bedrock of every law uh, or when it comes to issue of this is what we call evidence. That is what um, the law is based on. You have to provide the evidence. When it comes to criminal issue, you have to, it's, it has to be proved beyond reasonable doubt. That is how they are. So it has been laid out and they know what to do. And uh, if anybody against that, then the panel have a right to be able to bring the person to uh, to the right part and make sure that they don't uh, waste the time of the child. Yeah, it. and it does look like uh, it will not be televised as not some Nigerians had wished it would be. Also, make try to make sense of the protests that we saw yesterday at the tribunal by some Nigerians. There will always be protests. In the United Kingdom, during the coronation of the King of um, the King of England on Saturday, there are people protesting that they can't be killed. So, protest is a way of um, is is a fundamental right that has been guaranteed in the 1999 Constitution of the Federal mm -hmm. Republic. And everybody has a right to protest, so you cannot stop that. The only time you can stop it is when it gets violent. If it's getting out of law and you are trying to use it to disturb the peace of the people, then that's bad. It is right that enshrined in the constitution, so they have a right. Then, second, your second question about not being televised. There is nothing in the book that says that it must be televised. It is within the ambit of the, um, the panel to decide whether it should be televised or not. But for transparency's sake, everybody wants to be. People, many people they are, of, of that school of thought that it should be transparent enough for it to be televised so that everybody can watch. But I, 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 I agree with what you said initially in that. That in itself can mount some kind of pressure on the justices uh, the, of the Supreme Court or the panelists. But in all true sense of it, I don't see why we cannot televise it. But um, the, whether they televise it or not, what we want is we want um, justice um, to be delivered. There is a difference between judgment and justice. What people are just looking for is not for judgment, but for the justice, so that justice must be seen to have been made and has to be delivered, so that everybody. Uh, we feel satisfied since the court is the last hope of the common man. So shall it be back. Because of late, uh, a lot of Nigerians no longer have faith in, in the judiciary because of some of the controversial um, judgments that have been made in the past. So the people are losing so much faith. This is the time for the judiciary to be in this image and I hope they will be this, uh, uh, with this uh, tribunal. It's not only, we are focusing so much on president, president. Now, all other tribunals are going to see it. Mm -hmm. That will be that of the governorship, and they're going to be that of the 
House of Representatives, the National Assembly, and the State Houses of Assembly. For example, the, the, the tribunal for the for the governorship in River State has been moved to Abuja instead of Potako because of insecurity. Most people don't know that. That tribunal is going to sit in Abuja, not in Potako. Okay, uh, removing all the encumbrances, do you think uh, there's a possibility that some of these cases might be done with before the swearing in? Oh, definitely not. It's not possible. How many days? <laughs> we just have <laughs> today's night. <laughs> it's not possible, my brother. So we have barely how many 20 days? days. Tonight. Okay, today's tonight. I mean, yeah. we have 20 days. 20 days. No, no, no. It's not possible. It's not possible. So, there's no way the Israeli will come in, a new president will be sworn in on the 29th of May 2023. And in various states, I think 22 new governors will also be sworn in, 22 or so will be sworn in the previous state. But that is not the end of it. If at the end of it, or the tribunal, for whatever reason, um, decide that the election was not conducted based on the books, and um, then it can be annulled um, that we will have annulment of um, elections in most states. Uh, in the past, but that of, we've never had it since 1999, uh, where the presidential election was announced. So, if there's any, going to be any incongruences, there are going to be any challenges, we're going to see that this election was not conducted, it will be unknown. And don't forget uh, also that just like we are talking about today, the Supreme Court is going to deliver a judgment on that of Oshun, the election, governorship election of Oshun, mm -hmm. is going to be delivered in Abuja today. So. Uh, the people in, in Oshobo are sitting and waiting for that judgment. Whether Governor Glenn case is going to remain the governor of Oshun State, or former Governor Uyatola is going to be returned, or whether the um, court is going to ask for cancellation of the election and the conduct of it, we don't know. So we all are waiting to see uh, the outcome of that judgment from the Supreme Court in Okay, let's leave the executive now and go to the uh, the, the legislator, legislature okay. as it is, because the National Assembly, there's a lot of problem there. Uh, the ruling party is trying to select who will be uh, the next speaker of the House and also the Senate president. And two people have been anointed for these positions, but within the party, they are kicking against it. And outside the party, others are grouping to make sure that they unseat the people who are anointed. What is your take on this? There are two chambers of the National Assembly. One is the Senate, and another one is the House of Rep Representatives. 109 senators are going to elect the new president and other presiding officers of the Senate. And 360 members of the House of Representatives are going to elect the um, presiding officers of the House of Representatives. For me, I think technically, I think that of the Senate is a bit is a more like a done deal. Um, the uh, anointed candidate, uh, uh, Senator Goswin Akwabio, uh, seems to be enjoying the support of not only his party, but even other party members from the opposition. Don't forget, he was the former minority leader uh, of, the, of the Senate. Uh, that means that he was the leader of the PDP in the Senate uh, in the Ninth Assembly. So he has still has his colleagues. Uh, that was before he was removed. Um, he was. Uh, he's the man that had, knows how to play this game. And it seems that um, the APC has turned it uh, in the presidency to to the South side. And um, he's having some kind of... Uh, it's, it, I think he's, um, he's getting his colleagues, the colleagues behind him uh, across the party uh, lines with PDP, LP, and everything. Uh, Except something else happened, as it did in 2015, where the rug was pulled off the uh, of the feet of um, the APC as a party, and the anointed candidate there, who is the current pre uh, president of the Senate, Amala, uh, who was anointed by the party, lost that because of um, had the opposition and some uh, dissident, quote and unquote, members of the APC quickly rallied around and elected Kola Sarake as president of the Senate in 2015. I wouldn't know how that will work out now, but. Uh, for now, that is what it is. But for the House of Representatives, that is where the problem is. Because there are so many candidates, so many key people kick around. And to make it even more, uh, more difficult for the APC is the fact that um, the um, current um, um, leadership, the current membership of the House of Representatives, the minority party are in the majority. They are the majority party. I think they have about 180 or 181 members. 
to that of APC. There are three sisters of them, but the minority party are in the majority. So, and if they come together and put their house together, they have the, they have the uh, capacity to be able to upstage or be able to select, influence the selection. Yes, the party has come out to endorse um, certain individuals, somebody from the Northwest as the speaker, um, somebody from the Southeast as the deputy speaker, and, um, and for the, the, but there are other candidates, about close to about seven or six of them that have come out. In fact, once they declared yesterday, or another one declared on Saturday, I know that Yusuf Musaga, a very, very, very important member of that um, House of Representatives, somebody have done so well in the past um, four years, uh, former deputy speaker of um, the two state assembly, uh, somebody that out of the 19 bills that were signed into law by the president a few weeks ago, he presented six of those laws. So that shows how the capacity of that young man, Musa Dagi, uh, um, uh, Yusuf Musa Dagi from the two states. So they said they are not backing down. And the problem with this is that if the opposition, if the way the APC is pushing it, if the opposition decide to go for those that did not, um, that APC did not uh, um, uh, endorse, then it could be a problem. So where the issue is going to be, is going to be the House of Representatives out of the, uh, the Senate. I think that is more redundant. Okay, let's look at, because time will not allow us to go further, but let's look at what's happening today. Uh, tight security at Supreme Court rules on Adeleke Oyotola's case today. What do you make of that yeah. case? It's, it's on the Guardian yeah, so, newspaper. Yes, I've said that before. I said that the judgment is coming up today. And, uh, you know, if, we, if, if it's football, uh, man, you let's say man, you must. For now, you call it is a 1-1 one, one goal, let's draw. Go and don't go. <laughs> There's anything like that. Um, we had that one at the lower tribunal. And, um, and uh, Adelike won at, uh, at the Court of Appeal. Yeah. So today is the final. So this yeah. is today's uh, Champions League final. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so um, we don't know where the Belgium is going, either for Yetola or for Palestine. Uh, but I, I believe that it's a of to justice. Um, don't forget that behind this. Um, behind this um, dispute is the beavers, the almighty beavers. And um, where it was said that um, for certain reasons that the beavers um, that was over voting, over counting and those for them in that, uh, in that ballot, um, that is how Oyezla won at the ballot. But the court of appeal said no, um, that that should not be used. And we're talking about technicalities now. But the problem I have um, in our electoral uh, system now is a situation where Nigerians with their millions will vote for a candidate. Then two or three people will just sit down and decide who becomes um, exactly. uh, who, who, who was the winner. And that is not good enough for me. That is why we are calling INEC to make sure that they start by the rules and make sure that they make sure that it is possible for them to conduct election by the book so that we don't continue to resort to this issue of leaving it to the courts to decide the fate of millions and millions of Nigerians who are put there for certain candidates. But we we'll wait and see what is going to happen. Yeah, you took yeah, that. Exactly. Yes, Chris, you took that right out of my mouth. I was going to ask you what you think of the fact that you know the courts are beginning to decide the results of our elections after spending so much money to conduct these elections. After Nigerians have come out to queue under the sun and in the rain to choose a candidate, and then at the end of the day, it's the court that decides. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Chris Kainde-Wando is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitration, Arbitrators in the UK. He's joined us today, however, from Abuja. Thank you so much, Chris, for being a part of us uh, this morning. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice day. You too. Okay, we're going to take a short break now, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. We're looking at the crisis within the Labour Party and what really is going on. How is it going to affect the electoral pro the, uh, process that we are embarking on now? Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment.